This week on Carolina All Out. We're ready, in the blind, hidden, the flappers flapping, the birds are coming. Here we go. All right. Ah, blown dart. Here they come. Here they come out front, Skip. Out front. I love it. I love it. Woo! <laughs> It's the Old Crow Medicine Show. This is Carolina All Out. This week, the All Out crew is headed to Nash County for a reunion with Skip Woody and David Sanders of the NC Crow Patrol. With the regular season over, the attention turns to crows that are abundant all over the state. And Skip and David are just the guys to be with when it comes to hunting these wary birds and bringing them into range. Skip has a long-standing relationship with the crow and has had some great hunts over the years that by any measure would be considered epic. These hunts don't come too often, but when they do, it's because of meticulous scouting, planning, and knowledge of the bird's habits. Well, good morning. It is dark 30 right now. We're on our way to meet up with Skip Woody and Dave Sanders, an outstanding uh, crow guys, know how to call them. I'm excited about getting with them again. We got it about an hour before daylight, and I know they're already there getting set up because these guys are serious so uh, we're going to get serious too and get set up with them and uh, see what the morning brings. The weather's a little bit chilly it should be a good morning. We're ready in the blind, hidden the flappers flapping the birds are coming. I hear that boy. Here we go. All right. So the setup is on the point that sticks out in the field. Dave Sanders is on the right, Skip is on the left. I'm videoing Skip and Joshua Lawler, our cameraman and editor extraordinaire, is over here on the right with David. And so it takes two cameramen to cover this because when the birds come in, and you gotta imagine it's, you're seeing them coming, but then there's some that's possibly coming from behind you. So at some points in the game, we're not even sure where to even be pointing the camera because these guys are swinging guns all over the place. And that's so exciting. That is what's so fun about this sort of thing. Here we go. We're fixing to get busy here. Good shot. <laughs> Don't go away, more pro hunting action is coming up. Ah. Carolina All Out is brought to you by the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. Go hunt, go fish, go wild. Carolina Cooker Cast Iron Cookware, a tradition born in the South. 
XGO, those who know, we're XGO. Montgomery Community College, educating since 1967. Browning, the best there is. New Sports Shop, we've got the gear. And by Farms and Land Realty, selling land is what we do. Don't go away, there's more Carolina All Out coming up. Hi, my name is Becky Skiba and I work for the Wildlife Resources Commission as the Southeastern Regional Education Specialist. And we're out here today to talk about snakes. We have 37 different native species of snakes in North Carolina alone, six of which are venomous. We have the cottonmouth, also called a water moccasin, and you'll find those around really wet areas, especially swampy areas, uh, low-lying areas that collect water during rainfall events. They are called cottonmouths because when they open their mouth and they gape, they have this really white cottony color in the back but usually you have to really aggravate them before they'll show that. And then we also have copperheads, one of the most common. Uh, it'll be around your house. They could be in more suburban areas as far as if you're hunting on game lands and things. They're very prevalent in there. They hide really well in wire grass and leaves, in any kind of uh, brush that's on the, on the ground. And uh, sometimes we actually see them on oak trees. So definitely check trees and things where you're putting your stand, especially before you lay a hand down. I've seen them blend in perfectly uh, in the ridges of the bark of an oak tree going after cicadas and other things and they like to hang around the, the roots to find what they can eat for insects. If you'd like to learn more about snakes in North Carolina go to our website ncwildlife.org backslash reptiles. Flight line decoys. England. They make them uh, primarily to shoot uh, wood pigeon which is a big pest there. But it works awfully well with uh, crows. Come on, here it comes, right here, right? This is it, this is what the old crow's supposed to do, right here. Ah, that's what he's supposed to do. The all-out cameras are in focus and recording in Nash County as the birds are coming to the gun. Oh, yeah. He didn't see us. <laughs> Sorry. Crow is an incredibly challenging target. Uh, I have great respect for that bird. Uh, he's smart as everything. People think he's low and slow and flapping over the cornfield, you know, <laughs> and it must be a very easy target. Well, try to get him after he's riled up and charged up, coming to the rescue of one of his family members he thinks in, is in trouble, which is, the, which is the job of the crow caller, is to make that crow think one of his family members or neighbor is in trouble. And here they come a running. They're, they're incredibly acrobatic. So they're very challenging, and that's what makes the fun of crow hunting, a challenging target. I tell you, it hardly gets any better than that. Dead bird, good shot, David. Crow hunting is a great way to beat those postseason blues. Duck season's out, deer season's out. There's a span of time between then and the turkey season that you have nothing to do when it comes to hunting and shooting in the woods, and crows are a great way to fill that void. an explosion. That crow did not make a sound. He snuck in here on us. That's why I say about the 26 inch barrel. You've got to be able to react as soon as you see that crow, go to him and drill him. Fantastic shot.
Come on, Dan. Come on. Come on. Oh, did you, he just hung that so pretty. Skip was working off a tip from the farmers. Now, Nash County, known for peanuts. And these were old peanut fields that had been harvested and the birds had been migrating. And that's what happens with crows. They are migratory. And so during the peanut season, once the harvest comes, these birds really come into this area and they are everywhere. And so they make a plan to set up for the next day. He got him. Good shot, partner. Good shot. Stay tuned for more hot wing shooting action right here on Carolina All Out. Welcome back to Appetite for the Outdoors. I'm Chef Chad McIntyre. Today we're going to do a nice, easy kind of introduction recipe to wild duck. Do a quick marinade, super easy. We've got some minced garlic, a good tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, two tablespoons of olive oil, nice heavy on the black pepper, same thing on the salt, and then a little bit of Carolina cooker hot sauce just to kind of bump it up a little bit. What we're going to do is going to give these guys a quick toss put them in the fridge for about half an hour, and then we're gonna get the grill hot while we're doing that and get them cooked off. So what we're marinating the duck in today is the Carolina Cooker Enamel Oval dish, which is both oven safe and grill safe. All right, we've got our duck breast out of the refrigerator. It's been marinating for about a good 30 minutes in there. And so we've taken our Kamado grill and getting this temperature really up right now. It's about 550. Now we can get a good sear on it and kind of seal all the, the flavor in on the duck. So we're gonna go ahead and put our duck breast on there. And you want to give it about a minute and a half to two minutes per side, making sure not to overcook the duck. Wild game does much better when it's in that medium rare to medium temperature profile. That way it's not too tough. It's a very lean meat. So here you go, everything's cut right here. This is a great protein main course. You can serve it with anything. Me personally, I like it with a little bit of grilled vegetables and a little bit of hot sauce on it. And once again, it's always great to take wild game out in the field, but it's even better when you can incorporate it into a dish. The CAO crew is in the blind with the NC Crow Patrol and the birds are coming in. It's awesome to see them folded up. Those guys were really doing an awesome job with shooting, I mean, you know, and the one thing that I notice about crow hunters, they don't allow a limb or the trees to affect their swing. Go. You know, I've been affected by that over the years, you know, coming through, a bird flies through, you're in the limbs, you just kind of hold off or you're just like, oh, it's not gonna make it, but they shoot. They shoot right through those limbs and they're killing birds through those limbs. You're seeing limbs fall and you can look and see busted up limbs all around the place because uh, that's what they do. They are shooting, but they are killing. Here it comes right down the middle. Ha! I love it. I love it. But I tell you something else about the crow. He is probably what we call a one trial learner. You call a crow and he comes in and you shoot and miss. That crow is educated. We call it, he has his PhD. He's got a master's. And you can come back tomorrow, next week, next year. You can never call that crow again. He says, hey, guys, I've been there, done that. You fooled me once, fooled me twice, it's on me. The 
come. Here they come out front, Skip, out front. Speed load. I got him with my speed load. I was out of shells, loaded and shot with one shot. That's what's the, so good about the speed load feature on these guns. That was a nice little flurry. Big old crow. Use them as a decoy. Turkeys, crows, hawks, all of them are known for their eyesight. Crows have some of the best in the business. They live and die by their eyes. They find their food with their eyes. They stay away from predators with their eyes. And so when they're coming in, you know, one of the advantages that Skip put into his way of thinking is, is you put the sun in their face and at our back. And so that was a strategic place for him to put in. So they're coming in, and I'm telling you what, you've got to stay hidden because they will see you. Carolina All Out will be right back with more crow hunting action. Carolina All Out is brought to you by the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. Go hunt, go fish, go wild. Carolina Cooker Cast Iron Cookware, a tradition born in the South. XGO, those who know, wear XGO. Montgomery Community College, educating since 1967. AgriSupply, since 1962. And by Browning Trail Cameras, faster, smaller, better. Don't go away, there's more Carolina All Out coming up. Hello, I'm Bert Lee from the Sports Shop. I want to take a few minutes to talk to you about gun maintenance and gun safety. Just want to let you know, New Sports Shop, we have a, a variety of gun cleaning tools, along with gun kits, cleaning rods, cleaning patches, cleaning brushes, an array of cleaning products, lubricants, solvents to take care of your gun maintenance needs. And also, with a clean gun, you have a safe gun, along with safety, we do offer a wide variety of eye and ear protection. You cannot reverse the damage to your ears or your eyes. Lastly, I would like to share with you the three fundamentals of gun safety. Number one, always keep your gun pointed in a safe direction. Number two, keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. And number three, know your target and what's beyond it. For more information about our cleaning products, ear protection, our gun range, please visit us at the Sports Shop, Highway 70 Kinston. They see him coming right straight for the flapper. Well, three is a charm, I guess. The All Out crew is in Nash County and tucked behind the two lifetime members of the NC Crow Patrol, Skip Woody and David Sanders. Crows are everywhere, very numerous. They really have no predator except, say, the great horned owl. What we are has become basically a predator for them, but they have a broad range of foods that they eat, from crops to other bird eggs. Another thing that maybe a lot of people aren't so familiar with is crows detriment and predation on the songbird population and even game birds like quail and turkey. Skip and David decide to call it a morning and start rounding up the birds. It's a great way to beat those postseason blues when you need something to do to get out and what better way to have a shotgun in hand and a lot of aggressive birds coming at you it's just an awesome time. I learn a lot, and it's always great to be in the outdoors in North Carolina. 
We're doing something good for our farmers and for the songbirds. I'll be out there again doing it, you can bet. Well, Skip, it was a great morning, great shooting. Uh, the crows were presented well and uh, had some fantastic crow action here in North Carolina today. It was a nice morning's work. Our counter said we got about 55 or so birds on the, on the ground. It's great to have everybody out here this morning. And I tell you, I particularly uh, enjoy shooting with my buddy over here, David. We've done this for quite a number of years and we're just sort of a dynamic duo here. And I tell you this, if you shoot crows with your shotgun, you'll be a better shotgunner than you were before you started. <laughs> you just will. They present all the shots. The greatest wing shooting you ever do is, is, is crow hunting. So get out, get your shotgun, get you some shells, get you a Fox Pro and a decoy, and hit the road and uh, get some crow shooting in. It's great fun. Don't be filming me getting up. <laughs> Ah. ah, my knee's so sore. <laughs> don't, don't be them that far. Ah. I don't even see it. Oh yeah, I see it, yeah. They get curious. Over. I don't know how they stand it. Right there. Yeah, right there. we'll be right there. We'll be back, probably in that tree or in that tree. Daisy.